to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 2. We welcome you today to our study of Jesus, the compassionate King. Today we're studying Matthew chapters 8 through 11, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. We want to encourage you, if you don't have your Bible, to get it ready, locate it, pause for just a moment, find your Bible, get it ready, as we're going to look to the Gospel of Matthew chapters 8 through 11 to learn more about Jesus Christ, the most compassionate King ever. We're so glad you've joined us for our study today. Today's broadcast is brought to you by churches of Christ in your area, as well as individual Christians in those congregations. They would love for you, the church in your area, would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, uh, whether that be for Sunday or Wednesday Bible study or worship, you would be their honored guest. They would be so glad for you to stop by and worship with them, visit with them. They'd love to get to know you better. Friend, if you want to know more about the Lord's church, the ideas of salvation, how we worship, moral matters, whatever it may be, you will find people in the Lord's church who love God, who are concerned, kind, friendly people, who are concerned about God's truth and lost souls, and who to be happy to sit down and just open the Bible, see what God has to say on religious matters. Friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, We'd also love to help you in your journey to know God and His Word better. We want to encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. You can log on to that and from there access all our material free of charge. We have video lessons, audio lessons, transcripts, study questions, good library of Bible study material available to you, all free of charge. Every book of the Old Testament, every book of the New Testament is dealt with, as well as a wide variety of topical studies also. If you need a copy of today's lesson, you'd like to have a copy of our lesson on the Gospel of Matthew, you can access our website, visit our free media request form. There you can fill that out and we can give you a digital download instantaneously or if you need a DVD or a CD, we could send that to you free of charge in the mail as well. And so just contact us, let us know how we can help you. We'd be glad to do that. Also in our fast paced world today, where everybody seems to have a smartphone, we want to encourage you to visit the respective Apple Play Store and Android Store where you can download the Gospel of Christ app, which is a great tool to study the Word of God in our fast-paced world and keep up with our latest updates, things like under that. Today we're thinking about Jesus as the compassionate King. Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, we are initially presented with Jesus and His compassion. Listen to these words in Matthew chapter 8 as Jesus cleanses a leper. Beautiful passage. The Bible says, When Jesus had come down from the mount, great multitudes followed him, and behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand, touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, go your way, show yourself to the priests, offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Several things jump out to us from this text. Number one, this text confirms the deity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as He was able to immediately, just by touching the man, instantaneously heal him of the dreaded disease of leprosy. Who could do that but God in the flesh? 
Matthew chapter 1, verses 19 through 22. But along with this proof of Jesus' deity, we also see His great compassion for those who were sick. This man, the disease of leprosy, if you study up on that in the Old Testament, leprosy was uh, an awful disease to have. It was so contagious that you would be isolated from everybody else you knew except other lepers. If anybody approached you, you had to cry out, shout out to them, unclean, don't come over here and get what I got in essence. Imagine the isolation the, 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 on top of the sickness, probably the depression and problems go along with that. It's a dreaded disease. Jesus felt great compassion for that man, and he was willing to cleanse him. You know, when I think about sickness, when I think about what this man faced, the, the problems and the separation that he dealt with, you can't help but think about Jesus' love for all men who are sick with sin, right? Listen to the attitude of this leper. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. What a great heart. This man with that dreaded disease, he knew the only way ever he was going to get rid of that was to come to Jesus. Jesus, what a beautiful statement. I'm willing. Be cleansed. You know, when I think about the parallel spiritually, isn't sin the greatest spiritual disease ever? Sin is destructive. The way of the transgressor, the hardest life, and you will never find a more discouraging, depressing, harder life than a life lived in sin. Sin's a deadly disease. Like leprosy would eventually take its toll on the human body, sin's deadly. The wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. At that point in time, leprosy was not curable by men. Sin can't be cured by man. Jeremiah 10, 23, Jeremiah said, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It's not in man who walks to direct his own steps. God's the only one who can deal with and help us overcome the sin problem. And sin, like leprosy, causes great isolation and separation from God's people and from God himself. The Lord's ear is not heavy, Isaiah says that he cannot hear, his arms not shorten, that he cannot save, but your sins and your iniquities have separated you from your God. The only way people are going to be cleansed of sin is having the same heart and attitude the leper had. God is the only one could heal you. You've got to come to him in submission, submit to him, do what he says, follow his will, and you can be healed. And so as it relates to the sin problem, just like with the leper, we serve the compassionate king who says to all men, all, let all who labor and are heavy laden come unto me and I'll give you rest. Friend, have you dealt with, have you come to Jesus to deal with the sin problem? Have you really submitted your heart and your life to him so that he can wash you and cleanse you and make you free of sin? Jesus taught us that to be free of sin, we've got to accept He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him. Jesus clearly taught us we must repent of our sin. Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Luke 13 verse 5, The Lord acknowledged that we must confess Him before men. You won't confess me before men, Jesus said, Neither will I confess you before my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. And then the Lord said, To be saved of sin, we must be immersed in water. Listen to the words of Mark 16, 16. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. Have you done what? Do you have the heart of the leper? Lord, I know you're the only one who can cleanse me. Jesus is willing to do that. Will I do what he says and submit to him to be cleansed? As we look further in the Gospel of Matthew, 
I've got to have the heart and the attitude to possess the humility and the faith like the centurion in Matthew chapter 8, verses 8 through 12. Look at this beautiful text. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. This centurion who's got a sick servant, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from the east and west, sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What was the problem that Jesus was trying to address with, with Israel by using this man as an example? Here's this centurion, a Roman, probably Gentile background. He recognizes the only way my servant who he loved dearly, was going to be healed, was through Jesus. And when he comes to Jesus, he doesn't grab Jesus by force or try to entice him to come back to his house. He says, no, no, no. I know what it's like to have a lot of things to do. I know what it's like to be a busy person. I also understand authority. You say the word, and I know it'll happen. And Jesus said, wow, in essence, I've not seen anybody with faith like that among the Israelites. And then he goes on to talk about the essentiality of that. But I want you to see the, the humility and the faith of this man. To come, a, a man of great authority, to come and humble himself under Jesus, to have the faith to say, don't even worry about coming, you just say it and I know it'll happen. Friend, that's the, that's the humility and that's the faith we need to serve God and to follow Him. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted he who exalts himself will be humbled. We've got to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt us. And we've got to have the faith to realize Jesus can do all, through Christ. All things can ultimately be accomplished. Now, what about those who are healed? And especially speaking in the spiritual sense. A friend, just like we see in Matthew chapter 8, we're healed to serve. We are healed to serve. Look at Matthew chapter 8. Notice what the Bible says in verse 15. Now when Jesus had come, verse 14, into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand and the fever left her. Now watch this. And she arose and served them. Peter's wife's mother, his mother-in-law. Number one, Peter was married, had a wife. But also realize this, when Jesus healed her, she was healed to serve. She felt compelled by the joy of being healed to get up and serve Jesus in every way possible. Friend, isn't that a great picture of my life? When I am healed, when I am brought out of the muck and the mire of sin, I'm called to serve, right? The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. You know, when I think about, think about these examples here, Jesus healing the leper, Jesus healing the centurion, Jesus healing Peter's mother-in-law. Well, what are all these healings designed to do? What is this trying to show the Jews and to impress upon our minds today? Who could heal these people but God? Jesus healed these people, therefore He is God, and we need to give our allegiance and our heart to Him in every way. In fact, in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus is pretty much going to say, they come to the conclusion, and Jesus is pretty much going to tell them, He is God by His ability to forgive sins. Matthew chapter 9, I want you to read with me, beginning in verse number 1. The Bible says, So Jesus got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Now watch what they conclude. At once, some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, 
Why do you think evil in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk? Now watch, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, go to your house. Then he arose and departed to his house. When the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. When you think about this text, the Jews, and they, and they admit this in Mark chapter 2, they realize only God has power to forgive sins. Jesus forgave sins, therefore what's he say? I am God. And the miracle, the miracle should have confirmed that. that. Everything from the scriptures he taught them, this miracle by the faith of the friends, this man who is paralytic, who can't walk, he grabs his bed and takes up and walk? Well, what's all that about? Jesus is God. And thank God he is. For he has the power to forgive my sins and to forgive yours. Matthew 26, 28, Jesus, as he instituted the Lord's Supper, there at the Passover said, This is my blood of the new covenant shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. He's able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. Hebrews 7, verse 22, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. Hebrews 9, 22, and yet the Bible says, This man, after he'd offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And so when I think about Matthew 9, I'm reminded of Jesus' power and His ability to forgive sins. Then in Matthew chapter 10, as we turn our attention to Jesus' words here, Jesus reminds us of our need to continue to trust in Him all the way to the end. Look at Matthew chapter 10, and I want you to look in verse number 22. Look at what Jesus here says. The Word of God records, beginning in verse 21, Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rise up against parents, cause them to be put to death. You'll be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Now look in that same chapter, verse number 28. And do not... Fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. This text in Matthew chapter 10 reminds us of our need to never give up. There may be problems. There may be difficulties. There will be challenges. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3, verse 12. But in the midst of that, I still must endure to the end. He who endure The idea of enduring is stamina. I'm running a race right now. Fight the good fight, finish the race. I'm running a race. Some days we get tired. Some days we're right between catching our first and second wind and you can't hardly catch your breath, it doesn't seem like. Keep running. Keep fighting. Don't give up. Endure to the... Be faithful until death and you will receive the crown of life. Revelation 2, verse 10. And then Jesus reminds us in Matthew chapter 10 that by our lifestyle and by our words, we need to continue to confess Him every day of our life. Look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33. Jesus says, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I also will confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Friend, the idea of confessing Jesus, of course, naturally, we hear the Ethiopian eunuch do that when he obeys the gospel. If you believe with all your heart, you may. He says, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made initially in salvation. Romans 10, verse 10. But that confession doesn't end there. My confession is a life in which my life confesses Jesus Christ as Lord and as Sovereign 
every day. By the way I act, by the way I dress, by the way I talk, by my emphasis on the kingdom and spiritual things, God's got to come first. I've got to confess Him before all else in my life by the way I live that. And then in Matthew chapter 11, how the world needs more powerful gospel preachers and servants of God who prepared the way for Jesus like John the Immerser. I want you to look in Matthew chapter 11 and of the greatest compliments ever given, this one is given to John. Look in Matthew chapter 11, verse number 7. As they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. The violent take, take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John, if you're willing to receive it, he, John, is Elijah who is to come. And then Jesus goes on to tell them they need to listen carefully to that message. But you know, I'm thankful to God for the work that John did that one who prepared the way for the Lord, who got the people ready, who, who, who prepared Jesus to come in on the scene and preach the gospel. What a great man. Of those, I mean, think about this compliment. Of those born of women, nobody greater than John. And yet those who are least in the kingdom are greater than he. Why? Because John lived up to the kingdom, not in the kingdom. The, the, the kingdom it, Jesus is not emphasizing our superiority over John in that sense, but the superiority of God's kingdom over the kingdom John lived under. That's the whole lesson. We need more people, more preachers, more who will stand up and boldly proclaim, just as John did in Mark chapter 6, even when his head was on the chopping block, John said, face to face, it's not lawful. For you to have her. We need more people who will stand up to woke ideologies and say what God says. Who will stand up and say what's right and good and holy, what is immoral, ungodly, and wrong. Who will call sin, sin, and right, right, and do what God says unashamedly. I'm not, being, I'm not talking about being unkind. We're not talking about being mean-spirited. But we are talking about speaking the truth in love. And John wasn't afraid at all to do that. Finally, as we consider today a lesson that is so powerful and so touching from Matthew chapter 11, we learn about the true rest Jesus promises to give His disciples. Would you look in your Bible in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30? Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye who labor, and her heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. Find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Isn't that wonderful to hear? Come unto me. Who? All who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. The scripture says, let whosoever will come and drink freely of the water of life, Revelation chapter 21 and 22. Friend, God's plan is open to all people, regardless of, uh, of social status, regardless of ethnicity, regardless of uh, male or female, regardless uh, of how much we have or don't have. All men and women can come to Jesus and find that rest. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, 
I'll give you rest. Now let me talk to you about that rest just a moment. Every Jewish person understood the idea of rest. The land of Canaan was a promised land of rest, a land flowing with milk and honey without all the problems and difficulties that they had in Egypt and the wilderness of sin. It was a place where they could enjoy life where they wouldn't have the difficulties that they'd had before. Oh, a wonderful place of rest and relaxation. But we're not talking about a Canaan land of rest. We're talking about the rest of Hebrews 4 verse 9. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. What are we talking about? A heavenly rest. I go, Jesus said, to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions, many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. Then Jesus said, I want you to come also. They said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Friend, if you'll put your trust in Jesus, the compassionate King, He promises you and He promises me that rest. One day, if I, if I obey the gospel and I live faithful to Jesus and you do as well, one day I can hear those wonderful words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord. And so today we ask you, is that rest yours? Have you submitted your life to the teaching and life of Jesus Christ? Are you walking in the light? If not, we encourage you to do that today. And friend, we hope you'll join us next time as we study more from the beautiful gospel of Matthew. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.